You guys, Small. <sighs> we're getting induced today. So, backstory, right? So, I didn't expect to be induced today, right? So, my main thing was to just call and they tell me, like, no, we don't have no beds available. So, it wasn't in my mind, like, okay, this could happen today. Well, so I called at 6 and I spoke to the charge nurse. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, your midwife called. So, yeah, you can come in at 8. Just make sure you get something to eat and bring all your stuff with you. And I'm like, oh, shit. And she starts laughing and I'm like, she's like, are you shocked? I'm like, heck yeah, I didn't, I truly didn't expect for any beds to be available um, for induction. Because if you guys know, um, in Florida, I don't know if it's everywhere in Florida, when you schedule an induction, it's never a set date or it's just, it's never a go. So when I call and they said, yes, we're ready, we'll be ready for you by eight. And I'm like, so my heart is pounding right now so I'm like oh crap like I'm really about to go meet my baby soon I haven't oh crap the honey fell out anyway um, I haven't really told anyone other than like my co-workers I told my mom um, I told her you know just to like kind of throw it out there that it could happen but we're not telling um, anybody else until I'm in like complete active labor because we do know inductions can take several hours and I don't want nobody bothering me I am an extremely private and peaceful person I don't like people blowing me up I don't like people texting me all the time like that it irritates my soul so that's main, the main reason why I'm not letting nobody else know to my husband tell nobody until we're in active labor so that way once I'm in an active labor we say hey we're in active labor. We'll let you know when the baby's here. That's it. That's all people need to know. They don't need to know nothing, nothing further. We'll let you know when the baby's here and how we're doing. That's it. Um, that's just me. Everyone else is different. Um, you know, a lot of people like to tell a lot of family so they can pray for them and whatnot. But, you know, you guys can pray for us once we let you know we're in active labor. But again, that's just me. But I am gonna be vlogging as much as I can. I'm bringing my um, Canon R6 with me so I can take pictures of her when she is here. Like, I think I have everything set. And then after that, I'm gonna, once we're dis discharged from the hospital, I'll probably stay at my mom's house for a few days and then go home. I need to be home by Saturday because Colorado plays Oregon, that's gonna be a game and I can't miss that. But anyway, y'all, I think I'm ready. My husband's taking a shower right now. I ate, had a Cuban sandwich from Pollo. Bomb, 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 bomb. That, it's bomb as hell. The car seat is packed. Like, we're good. So I'm probably going to eat like a donut. Um, and yeah, I think everything is, we're good. There's a step closer to meeting Miss Emery, uh, which is her name. I know I say I would um, give you guys a name reveal, and that's what I'm doing right now. Her name is Emery Nicole. And when you're watching this, baby girl, I can't. We are so ecstatic to finally meet you and to meet the girl that's been terrorizing her. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next clip when we're on the way to the hospital. Okay, we're heading to the hospital. Bay, how you feel? Ready. You feel ready? Well, yeah, but you're, you're going to feel ready because you don't have to push her out. Exactly. <laughs> so, we'll be sweating. So, we're heading there. Car seat's back here with her pink blankie. So, we're, I'm excited, but nervous, scared. I mean, who wants to go through pain, right? I know I've heard a lot of mixed reviews with induction, getting induced or whatnot, but I think everyone experiences different, whether your water breaks naturally or they break your water. Anything ha anything could happen. So we're praying for the best and we're praying for a fast and healthy labor and delivery. So. Uh, I'll jump back on camera once we're 
we're settled into our hospital room. All right, y'all, it is go time. Look at our room. Nice little size room. Happy? Mm -hmm. So, right now I am about, just about two centimeters dilated. And I got my IV in me. And yeah, it is happening. So, um, I should, I should get out of bed, right? Start moving. She's going to yeah. get me, she's going to bring the, um, stability ball. I can move around in it. So, once we get that going, I'm going to see if I can help dilate myself by movement. And I'll get back on camera once that happens. We have some innovation going on over there. My husband then made the couch into a small little bed. So it's pretty comfortable. And... So far, I got a medication in the tunnel, and it's supposed to help. Um, she said it's supposed to help dilate me, right? I think it's supposed to help dilate me, right? Um, I think it said she said soften your cervix a little bit. Soften my cervix. So that she had to insert it through the tunnel. And uh, I'm supposed to soften my cervix, and within that time frame, um, I should start to feel cramps. But so far, I've been going through a lot of different contractions, whether it's Braxton Hicks or contractions in general. But I haven't really been feeling them. So I've, I only time I start to feel Braxton Hicks is if. Of course, I touch my belly and it's hard, but it has to reach my pelvic area and it's pressure. And yeah, I don't know if I'm just tolerating pain. Um, I don't know. But it is now 1.40 and the next medication would be in four hours, but I may or may not need it. I don't know. We'll see. But I am not comfortable. My sinuses are inflamed. The IV hurts. I'm, I just, I'm not going to be able to sleep. Well, you tie, you tie. But as of right now, I'm not comfortable. So, anyway, that is the update. And. Induction can take very long. Inductions can go fast. We'll see. But in the meantime, I'll get back on camera once we have some more movement. How do I do this? Alright, you guys. How long it's been? It's been over 24 hours, right, babe? Yeah. It's been a whole day, and I am currently 9 centimeters dilated. We're trying to get her down into my pelvis right now, so I'm in like this awkward position. I can't really show you guys, but we're almost there. I'm on epidural. When I tell you, I salute the women who go natural because there is no way I can go natural ever. Ever, ever, ever. Like, I went up to, I think I was like three to four centimeters. And the contractions, like I'm feeling one now, cause like the epidural is not as strong as it was when the standard dosage was put in. But oh my god, I'm ashamed. Like if you're wondering if you should get an epidural and you don't do good with pain, get the epidural. Don't don't be silly. Get that epidural. Don't even put yourself in that position to go through to go through that. I know I look crazy, but birth is not a beauty contest. But anyway, nine centimeters. We're trying to get her to get more further down into the pelvis. My water broke like 12 hours ago. So she is almost here. I'm going to have my husband do the recording. Once I start to feel that pressure to poop. Once you feel that pressure that you have to poop, it's go time. But anyway, you guys, we're almost there. I'm about to meet my little girl. Uh, what else happened? Um, 
those cervix checks are the most uncomfortable thing if you don't have epidural in you yet. If you're wondering, that's my arm. Um, once you get the epidural, you don't feel a thing once they do cervix checks. Um, that's in the background, that's her heartbeat. And honestly, once the water break, you don't want to be... You don't want it to be too long because it's been over 12 hours. My temperature is starting to rise and you don't want the baby's temperature to rise. So, yeah. I've been trying to get as much sleep as possible. It's the first thing everyone says, like try to sleep as much as possible as soon as you get that epidural in you. But um, once I came in here, the first thing they did was add a pill in the vagina area and usually they add eight pills every four hours for me I only needed one and that jump started labor for me I went from like two centimeters to three and then um, once I hit three centimeters and those contractions came poof I, 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 mm -mm. I couldn't handle it then I got to four centimeters and then around four centimeters is when I got the epidural. And the epidural is a process. So honestly, don't even wait too long before asking for epidural because you're gonna be going through heavy contractions while trying to get an epidural and you gotta sit still while he's putting it or while he or she's putting the needle in your spine. And then once the epidural is in you, um, what ends up happening is once you like sleep on the right or left side, once the standard doses starts to wear off after a few hours, um, most of the medicine starts going to like your right side or your left side. So a couple hours later, you'll start to feel a lot more pain on one side, but you end up getting like a remote to administer more epidural when needed. I haven't eaten anything. I've been on clear fluids for a whole day. I'm starving, but honestly, even after she comes, I don't even think I would want food. Like, so anyway, you guys, this is the last bit of it, and I'll jump back on camera where my husband will record some of the process once. It's time to push. Bye. Hey, y'all. I don't know she where I left off at, but I had my baby girl. It's been a few days, right. and I it's been a. Because of her, because of Stitch Fix, I wouldn't say a traumatic experience. It could have turned into a traumatic experience, so easy. but so, thank you, Stitch Fix. it was something I'll never forget. I will tell you that much. But this is, you know what? I don't know if I want to show y'all my baby girl yet. I'm gonna hold off on that. But um, I'm gonna come come back on camera once I'm home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad, my bad. We got a few Um, once I'm like set at home. So once I'm settled at home, I'll give you guys the experience on. I'll give you guys the story on like what I experienced and all that stuff. So, but yeah. Baby girl's home. She will be a week old tomorrow, which is the 26th. And today is her first pediatric appointment. So I'm gonna holla at you guys either later today or sometime during the week, uh, as this will be a continued video from the start of labor. Yeah. But I will tell you this. I am loving this experience, this journey, this new chapter in life. It's wonderful. I'm like a little Haitian right now. My sister gave me this dress, but you know, it's comfortable. I look crazy. I'm comfortable. I'm healing. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Not me finally getting around to making this video after five long months. I don't even know where to start. So from that last video you guys seen, I was in the hospital bed. Other than the video you seen where I had already gave birth and I was one week postpartum. It started when I believe when they inserted the medication inside the tunnel 
to help dilate faster. So later that night, I ended up dilating to about nine centimeters. I couldn't tell because I was on epidural, but they had to increase the Pitocin in order to speed up the process because hospitals don't want you there for a long time. I, the induction date was Sunday. I had her that Monday on her actual due date. Once they increase the Pitocin, the epidural basically becomes out of sight, out of mind. Like you start to feel that pain. Those contractions, from what I can remember, were coming, instead of coming every min one minute to three minutes, they were coming every 30 seconds. And I believe I started feeling the real contractions, other than the four centimeters um, contraction, I started feeling the contraction, I think at like eight centimeters, right babe? I was like eight centimeters, right? When they did the Pitocin, I was about eight centimeters where when I started truly feeling the contractions and um, I remember the nurse telling me that once we increase the Pitocin, you won't feel the epidural, you're going to feel every contraction. Those contractions, I have no words and it's something that I never, ever, 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 ever want to experience. Again, I think I said it in the last clip, I will choose a c-section every time i only want two kids anyway but <laughs> we opt in for three c-section me because i i'm not dealing with those contractions at all i'm not one of those girls that went natural no hell no so after that i tried my best to hold it together i failed miserably those it was so intense my husband was there consoling me but it, it was like one of those things where like don't touch me touch me I was so uncomfortable it was it was it was insane now fast rewind so before all of that um, when they do put you on the epidural your legs become numb so there was a time in the hospital where my husband's knocked out on the couch I'm calling his name like hey don't hey He's not answering because he's knocked out and my legs are numb because of the epidural. My anxiety got so bad, I gave myself a panic attack because you're trying to move and your legs are heavy. Like you're feeling it, you can't feel your legs at all. Like it, it was so scary. I had to buzz for the nurse because I just needed someone to just talk me out of my thoughts. And the nurse came in and she was wonderful probably one of my favorites two two favorite nurses other than my midwife but there's two other nurses that I adore and th she was there she sat down with me talked you know just basically calmed me down but listen if you're going through labor for the first time your legs go numb after the epidural and it's the most frightening thing to me at least um, but eventually you kind of kick it out of your mind just make sure you have someone there to kind of like calm your anxiety let you know that it's going to be okay it's part of the symptom or the side effects of epidural but it's not a good feeling at all so after that was happening i started dilating very slow and that's why they had to increase the pitocin so once i got to like eight centimeters i got to nine centimeters fast and then later that night my midwife um, came into the room and her shift was ending so she wasn't going to be the one to deliver the baby so another midwife who I've seen before what um, came in she was going to be the one to deliver the baby and once my midwife clocked out maybe after an hour or two they did serve a cervix check and realized I was nine centimeters so after that she they came in and was like all right, we're gonna do practice pushes. And I don't know if practice pushes mean you're actually in active labor and we're gonna say practice push and not increase your anxiety. Cause I'm thinking like, okay, we're gonna practice push. Let's see if I can get a hand pushing, whatever like that. Whole time, this is the real thing. <laughs> so I don't remember exactly, but I'll put it on the screen. The positions that they had me in to get her to descend down, cause she was head down, um, but she wasn't descending into the pelvis. The positions that this other nurse, who we will not say a name, but I pray the next time I do have a baby and I go to this hospital, they do not assign her to me. She was horrible. She was so nice, but horrible. 
and it was one particular position again if you guys seen on the screen she had me in that position for probably more than 30 minutes and now I'm paying for it like my hips hurt so bad like there's certain positions that I can't be in or else it's like a sharp shooting pain and I know exactly why that is and that's because she left me in that position for a long time and the different positions that they'll put you in some of them are okay understandable but man this, these motherfuckers had me playing tug of war like I'm legs wide open punani out pulling trying to see if the muscle that I guess that you use to push out a baby it it was it was so embarrassing I feel it, it was it's like it's not embarrassing but it is embarrassing <laughs> so um after three hours of pushing this baby was not descending down and then the midwife had already known I think at like two, hour one right babe no not oh about one o'clock no like it was like after what one or two hours of pushing uh, two hours. it was about two hours of pushing and the uh, the nurse didn't want me to have a c-section but the midwife had already known like listen like she's not descending down and that's when she mentioned you're probably gonna have to have a c-section and i didn't want a c-section at the time i'm like well can we keep trying or maybe whatever and it wasn't like what i was doing wasn't right like i was pushing i was pushing correctly i did i did poop a little that's gonna happen ladies so if you're worried about a little bit of poop coming out it's gonna come out it's okay because if a little bit of poop is coming out that means that you're pushing correctly so all that's going on um, even my husband it was just like the amount of pain that he seen me in. it was I told him if you see me out of it and I'm in so much pain make that decision for me if the midwife makes a decision make that decision for me to agree to move, proceed so third hour came I was just like well, I wasn't like the midwife was like, listen, I'm going to call this doctor. He is on call. We're going to get we're going to have to do a C-section. So I'm scared out of my mind. Like, I'm like, I'm going to get cut open. I've heard horror stories with C-sections. I'm like, I'm never going to get rid of this scar. Like all this is playing in my head. Like social media plays in your mind when it comes to certain things. And C-sections is so frowned upon on social media. And it makes you think like dang like you get a c-section like your body's ruined that's absolutely not true especially if you have a great doctor so this doctor was on call and he's phenomenal and i've seen him before he comes highly recommended for c-sections you can barely see scars when it come um to him when he operates on you but he happened to be in the hospital so it, it didn't take long for me to already be in the or room within like 20 minutes I was already shaking because of the epidural. I'm in there like <laughs> my hand shaking. I'm cold. The epidural got me shaking. My anxiety is up. My heart rate up. Like I, there was no way for me to like kind of calm down. But I was calm at the same time because you're here. The baby got to come out either way. So we get to the OR um, and then they started administering another set. I think it's like I don't know if it was it wasn't epidural but it was another set of um, medication that they put you on so you're completely numb there and um, I kept telling the, the guy that uh, I think it's an anesthesiologist I'm like just make sure you're giving me some strong shit like I don't want to feel it so he assured me I was fine and then um, he's talking to me and then he was like did you feel that and I was like no and then that's when they told me they had already cut like three layers um, so I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel nothing during the um, C-section. And then, honestly, I don't remember. Babe, do you remember the time I went in there? Yeah. To the C-section? Oh, uh, C-section. We went in there about, um, through, we went in there right at like 3 o'clock. Around like 3 o'clock. So it took an hour. It was an only an hour operation. And then, 30 uh, minutes. huh? 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Um, operation and then when they cut me open she was head down but she was sunny side up so it would have been an emergency situation had she descended down because they would have put her and me in a bad situation and the reason why she couldn't descend down is because my pelvis is too narrow like I'm, I'm a very small girl so I don't have like those wide hips I don't have what they call mom hips 
um, or birth hips because um, it's easier for babies to pass through when it comes to um, giving birth. So either way it goes, if I wanted to do a V-back, it would be extremely hard because of how narrow my pelvis is. And she was 8 pounds. So they say once one baby's 8 pounds, the next baby's probably going to be a little bigger. So highly that I would be able to do a V-back anyway. So yeah, she was sunny side up, facing up. And if she would have passed through, if I had those mom hips, then she could have been in a dire situation. It would have been an emergency situation. But it wasn't. Everything went so smooth. It was such a easier process outside of the whole three hours of pushing. And once she was here and they handed her to me, she wide, eyes wide open, looking right at us. And I'll put it here on the screen where, it's, um, where the anesthesiologist took a picture of us. But looking right at me, she was just so alert. It was amazing. It was such an amazing situation. And most people would be like, oh, I'm never doing this again. And the whole process of even pregnancy, labor, delivery, and after the C-section, I would do it all over again. One time, though. One, one more time. That's it. That, I'm not doing two or three. I salute. I say two. I'm not doing three or four. I salute all the moms who have more than two kids. Like my sister, she only wanted a second and ended up with twins. So she has a daughter and a set of twins. I hope God don't play with me like that. That's why it's so scary for me to even think of a second right now because I'm like, what if that same situation happens to me and I end up with twins and I got three kids. Ain't that? Mm -mm. But that was the whole story everybody's story is so unique i'm pretty sure there's probably a mom who went through something similar but i feel like everybody's story when it comes to labor and delivery is so unique and that's what makes it so beautiful in motherhood and i only i think i said it before and i, I love the fact that it was just me and my husband in there because i feel like after um the nurse would have said c-section if my mom was there she would have been like oh no like let's let's pray and do all this stuff and granted all that is nice but we're in a dire situation right now okay we have no time to waste so i was just happy with that decision that i made it was just it's just me me uh, it being me and him and then after that um all the nurses were so helpful baby girl was she was if I remember correctly, she gave no issues. She just wanted to be fed and slept. And that's usually what newborn stage is. Now, some babies are different. She didn't really cry like that. Her cries are very soft compared to the other babies we heard in the hospital. Because, oh my goodness. She is, it was such, still is such a, now when she cries, she cries on top of her lungs. But she was just such a soft cry baby. Now, there was a time where we were like, we sent her to the nursery. <laughs> And so me and my husband can get some sleep. And then like maybe two hours later. <laughs> my husband woke up and was like, what's she doing? <laughs> Babe. Remember that? When you woke up, you were like, wait, what's she doing? <laughs> when we sent her to the nursery. <laughs> and the nurse is by her back. Exactly. She came back after two hours and you can tell that let her cry. She was crying her lungs out or whatever. And then that from there, from the hospital to when we got home, that's when we started the horrible habit of having her sleep on us because we just wanted her to stop crying or fussing. And then she started sleeping on us. I didn't mind it because just the cuddles with her and just making sure that she's safe. Like I truly didn't mind it at all. Through the healing process with the hospital, um, you know, when you push, I think it's just in general, those muscles um, that you hold, those mus the pelvic muscles or whatever, my husband kept making me laugh. Mind you, I'm not, I'm, I have stitches. This man's making me laugh. And I think you made me re-bleed, babe, because of the laughter. I ended up <laughs> peeing on myself and slightly opening up one of the stitches because of him making me laugh, which is a good thing but anyway that's the story that's my birth story 
um, of what I went through. I had some images on here that I don't mind sharing, but it was such a um, beautiful process, if that makes sense. Um, and even now that she's five months, she's growing up so fast. I'm extremely emotional just watching her grow up because when you look at newborn picture her newborn pictures or we as a mom when you look at your baby's newborn picture into what they are now it's like where has time gone like i literally just gave birth so that's why and so it's so important to enjoy every moment every second every minute with your baby it's okay to be stingy with your baby it's okay to shut off the world and just bump with your baby because you only have them as an infant, as a newborn, as whatever they call these babies these days. You only have them for a short period of time before they become toddlers. So I would say enjoy every moment with them. And not everybody has a village or whatever, but look at it like this. You are the village for this baby. And you are all that they know. So make the best of it because they're only little for a short period of time. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this birth vlog, if that's what you want to call it. And sorry, it took so long. It took me five months to finally sit here and do it. Cause, and it, the sooner I would have done it, the better, because I would have remembered a lot more. But as time gone by, there's probably essential pieces that I'm missing because I kind of like rushed it and asked my husband like hey like was it this or was it that that's it hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll catch you guys in my next video make sure you guys check out my other videos she is in some of my other videos if you check out my Instagram I have family pictures with her up I'm not posting her a lot on there um just to retain my privacy and there's creeps out there okay like there's weirdos and creeps and perverts out there so um, I'm not posting her as much. I'm gonna avoid all those shit. So I also forgot to mention that I was readmitted after after I was released from the hospital. She went to her first pediatrician appointment. Then after that, a few days later, I went to my first follow-up appointment to look at the incision of the C-section scar. So, my daughter has a cold. So I went to the doctor. I never, had blood pressure issues ever, ever, ever. So even throughout pregnancy, even throughout labor and delivery, even after she was here, my blood pressure stayed between 118 and 122, over 70 to 75. When I got to the doctor's office, my blood pressure shot up to 140 over, I think it was 140 over 90. She checked the other arm and went, it was, I don't know if it went up or if it was just different. It went up to 155 over 100. So the doctor who did the C-section, he said he wouldn't have felt comfortable if he didn't send me back to the hospital, in which he did. He told me to go to the hospital, get checked for preeclampsia. Postpartum preeclampsia is a thing. So I went to the hospital, went to the emergency room, they tested me. First thing they said, it was like, oh, everything is good. We're just gonna admit you, but your blood work seems to be fine. Mind you, my blood pressure shot up to 177 over 110. I guess once it hits over 170, they automatically diagnose you with preeclampsia. So I was admitted and they put me on magnesium for 24 hours and they put me on blood pressure medicine. So I was in the hospital for basically two days um, after giving birth. And so it's me. The first night I slept, I slept in the hospital by myself. Mind you, I have a newborn. So my husband and my daughter went home and we were staying at my parents' house, so my husband just ended up just going to the house. So it was just him and my daughter. My mom wanted him to come to the house, but my, my husband has it under control. But I understand her concern. So the next night, they spent the night with me. So they were able to give my daughter her own little bassinet. It was basically, I went back into the maternity um, ward. That was that, um, I was released like the third the third day spent two nights there at least that that morning that Sunday morning I think and I had to be on blood pressure medicine I that's not something I don't like taking medications at all so I did everything I could to regulate my own blood pressure and which I did now I, my blood pressure is back to normal it's the last time they checked was like 118 over 70 so I'm really big on making sure like my numbers, my cholesterol, my high blood pressure, like all of that is normal. So yeah, I was released and had my blood pressure medicine, but I ended up getting off of the, 
<laughs> I ended up getting off the blood pressure medicine, so now everything's regulated. But just know, I'm not trying to scare anyone. This doesn't happen to everyone, but it could happen to you. Postpartum preeclampsia is a thing. So if your blood pressure, I, I often think to myself, I don't have blood pressure issues, never did. But my midwife did recommend that I would that I took baby aspirin when I was pregnant, and I didn't because I'm like, what was the purpose? Of, what's the purpose of me taking baby aspirin if I don't have blood pressure issue? And in my head now, I'm thinking, I'm like, well, shoot, like, should I have taken it? So do as you will with that information. Would I have? Would I take it with the next baby? Yes, because I want to avoid that because that was the most scariest situation I've ever been in outside of um, giving birth, obviously. That's what ended up happening. I don't know how I forgot to mention that, but yeah, that was part of the recovery while recovering from a whole C section. But other than that, five months postpartum, everything's fine. I even dropped weight if you guys can see the difference between the videos I posted when I was pregnant. Slowly but surely, the weight is going off. Always remember, give yourself grace, and just know that you just gave birth to a healthy and beautiful baby. And if you'll get back to yourself. Give yourself grace and don't forget to take care of yourself. So when you can, put on a little bit of makeup. Put on one of your favorite dresses if you can still fit it. Even if you can't, put something on that you think you feel you look feel and look great in. And strut around that house and always remember you are that bitch. You just gave birth. Okay? Alright, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed and for real this time. Bye. I'm thinking you were made for me It's in my birthday yet yeah, Cause I gotta say You're looking like a gift for me Wrapped up nice and neat, baby